I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumbry here again at JoeBlow.com with another film review. And this time we're taking a look at the much anticipated, or at least much delayed, The New Mutants. Now, after years of delays, many release date shuffles, and, well, a pandemic, The New Mutants is finally hitting theaters this weekend. But was the wait worth it? Is this a triumphant new beginning for the X-Men franchise or a misbegotten final nail in the coffin of what was once one of the former 20th Century Fox's crown jewels? Now, I can tell you honestly that I went into the New Mutants wanting to like it. The Knives have been out for this movie ever since the first delay, and the press tour for the film, where journalists, myself included, had to conduct interviews without seeing the film, was highly unusual. Disney has seemed kind of ashamed of the project, that they've begrudgingly inherited, although they steadfastly refuse to cave to fan demand and release it into one of their streaming platforms. Now, having talked to Boone, I have to say, he seems like he was very passionate about the film, and I quite liked him. I wanted to like the film, I really did. And in some ways, I'll say this, the choice to put it out in theaters is kind of understandable because it just couldn't have gone to streaming. The fact is, no one would have been able to sit through it. It's a terrible film utterly devoid of the charm and imagination that has made Boone such an up-and-coming director. When I was listening to him talk about the film during our interview, you could really tell that he was passionate about the project, but it just doesn't work. It's simply not compelling, and a quick opening weekend play at the box office is really the only way anyone's going to emerge from this one devoid of massive embarrassment. All they could hope for is a quick box office death, and then for everyone to just move on and forget about it. It's hard to single out just why it's such a bad film, but here we go. Imagine an X-Men movie without any of the X-Men or villains, but you never get a look. Sure, there are villains set up for pretty much the entire film, but you never get a look at any of them. In some ways, it feels like Disney might have gone back and chopped out any links to the MCU so they could start again, and it's hard to blame them. Unless you're a big devotee of the second string characters here, the young cast won't stand out in a big way. In the comics, the young team are students of Charles Xavier's, but here, there's no real link to him outside of a few quick references. I'm sure it was supposed to lead into a nice little expansion, but all of that's been excised. Instead, it's a teen movie where Blue Hunt's Danny Moonstar wakes up in a mysterious institution that houses fellow mutant teens, all of whom are convicted killers. There's Anya Taylor-Joy as Ilyana Rasputin, a Russian victim of human trafficking, Maisie Williams as Rand Sinclair, a Scottish teen who turns into a wolf, Henry Zaga as Roberto, a Brazilian teen that can shoot fire, and Charlie Heaton as Sam Guthrie, who can kind of fly and hails from the coal mines of Kentucky. Now, this is an issue, by the way, the accents. Heaton, in particular, sounds ridiculous, with his southern accent sounding a lot more Barney Fife than reality. Anya Taylor-Joy is similarly over the top as the Russian mean girl, at least at least she's mean until, well, all of a sudden she's not. Only Williams comes off really well, but I suspect that's because she's the only really seasoned pro in the cast, with newcomer Blue Hunt sidelined in her own film, with her character, who's supposed to grow into Mirage, sitting out most of the finale. She spends an awful lot of the movie asleep, and I have to say, I kind of felt a little bit sleepy myself towards the end. Boone is clearly working on a low budget, and he doesn't do a lot to make this visually interesting. And considering how well-versed he is in music, it's too bad that the setting isn't taken more advantage of. There's really not much in the soundtrack beyond a choice replacements track. Alice Braga is the mysterious doctor running the facility who works for a shadowy organization we're asked to all but forget about at the end because, well, I guess it would dig too deeply into the X-Men lore and prevent a more successful spin-off. This is a one-off for the franchise that sadly should have stayed buried, and one whose failure, all involved, will hopefully be able to just forget about. If you're really keen to return to theaters, this is not the movie to do it with. Just wait for Tenet. I give this one a very disappointing 2 out of 10. I really, really did not care for it.